Larry Smith Outdoors is brought to you by Warrior Boats, Vortex, Tubble Towels, Fartline Barrels, Magic Products, Power Sports Company, Mike's Country Meats, The MRD Group, Leroy Meats, Easy Loader Trailers, and heavy shot. Do you remember like I always say, it's a great day to be alive. Hey everybody, welcome back to our show this week. I'll tell you what, and I really will tell you what, we are no doubt in a little slice of paradise fishing with our good friend. Hey Matt, I'll tell you what. You know what, we've been trying to get together and to do this trout fishing for what, about the last 10, 12 years. Yeah, and finally we got it done. And uh, you know, let's talk a little bit about this. I know that you send me pictures all the time and your passion, no doubt, is trout fishing and grouse hunting. You know, it's kind of cool when you look at, you know, the whole state of the UP and you look at the, you know, Wisconsin and Minnesota, you think about like all the great trout streams that we have thousands and thousands of miles of trout streams, you know? And you know, when it comes to eating, brook trout are no doubt my favorite. And that's let's, yeah. that's really what we're doing today, huh? Yeah, yeah, so we're fishing, um, we're gonna be walking up two different sections today. And you know, our hope is to kind of switch off spinner, worm, spinner, worm, and then see what we can pull out of all the different holes as we work our way up. So what makes you, do you start with a spinner or do you start with a worm? Yeah, so I'll usually uh, tie a little snap swivel on and then uh, start with a spinner and then drag that through, you're gonna get the most aggressive fish and okay. oftentimes the biggest fish, like straight away. Really? Um, with that spinner. And then when it calms down and they're not chasing it anymore, then switch on to, to the hook put the worm on there and float that right through the pool. Don't use any weight or anything, just let it. Naturally flow on. Huh? Just let it kind of float down and, cause that's what they're used to seeing, you know. The mistake I always made was to have too much weight cause I'm trying to get that crawler right down in where I thought it should be. Yeah. But again, more of a natural flow because them trout, they're smart. If you think about really a diet of a trout, what does a trout really eat? Yeah. A lot of bugs this time of year, that's a, that's a huge thing right there. And you know, but they'll eat anything from you know, we found, mm -hmm. found mice in them, snakes, frogs, snakes, huh? other brook trout. Holy cow! Um, so, you know, in a stream like this where there's there's not a huge, uh, you know, not a ton of, of food coming through here, the, they can't the, afford to be too picky, the, right? Yeah, they're gonna take what they can get. You know? And what a great thing to do, you know, you think about trout fishing, the water probably is in the 50 degrees, you know, on them hot summer days. You know, what a great place to be, right in a trout stream yeah. to stay cool too. Hey, dunk your shirt, dunk your hat, you stay cool all day. I'm definitely looking forward to this one, everybody. Hang on to your honeys, let's see how today goes. See my line jumping? Yep. Oh, Ooh, I got him. Oh, I lost him. Oh, oh I threw that up. He's coming right to us. Is he? Here we go. Oh, yeah. First brookie of the morning. That's a nice fish right there. Might be a worm day today, Matt. Yeah, are you already switching? Nice. Yeah, oh yeah. Good I always nice. love how pretty these fish are too, everybody. Look at that. Absolutely delicious eating, but just fun. You know, and again, it's just doing something different. Nice job. No, they're all fun. I mean, look how pretty they are. Nice fish. Better one. Nice. There you go. Well, I'll tell you what, you catch another one like that, I might go with the spinner just because every time I put a crawler on, it's gone. That's what's nice when you do somebody fishing a spinner, somebody fishing a worm, because you get the active ones right away. Right. And the inactive ones are sitting below. There we go. Yeah, that's a good fish right there. Oh, feisty. Yeah, now that's, 
right there is a nice troll. Yep. That one I'm definitely going to keep. Love that. Look at how many, wonder how many like different colors are actually in a brook troll like that. I have a live wolf. Oh, you do? You got a live wolf. Look at that. Right. Water. Another use for the double toes. Have them? Yeah. Oh, that didn't take you long. Looks like a good fish. Better, yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. Ooh, that was a good fish. Ooh, there he goes. Yeah. Oh, good fish too. You, oh, that's a nice one. Oh man. Oh, oh. Look at the size of this trout, you guys. Oh, that is a giant. Oh man. Yeah, thank God I oh, that now. Oh, dude. Oh, oh. Look at the size of that troll. Oh, you didn't bring the net. I did not. Oh, you had it in the truck. Oh, that is a giant brookie. I have to tell you, that's probably one of the biggest brook trout I have ever, in out of a stream, will ever seen. That is no doubt a giant. Yeah. Genetically, that's a monster. Yeah, right. So these big ones like this, there's there's no reason to take them out of the creek, even though this is a male, quite an appetite. So yeah, he took it, but he didn't take it too bad. And yeah. these are all natural out of this. That's this stream too. This isn't planted at all. No. There we go. That's what I do, you know, oop, there he goes too. No doubt I'm always line watching. That's the big thing about trout fishing like this is that I'm really not feeling the fish bite. I'm waiting to see that line jump like that. And as soon as it jumps like that, you know, I give it a split second and then set the hook. And the biggest thing is too, is to really kind of know your spots where these fish are gonna lay. And like he was, Matt was saying, you're basically looking for the dark spots, you know, where the, the bottom's dark, and that's what them trout like, because you think about that, you know, there's a lot of birds that'll prey on these trout, and, you know, if they're sitting in a light spot where the birds can come over and see them, they're definitely gonna dive down and grab them. Oh, it's a good one, dude. Oh, 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 that is a good one. I can't believe it, I mean, you can see how dark that is. I was just gonna pull it out of the water right there. No doubt, that's a good trout. Oh, I'm loving that. Now that's a perfect trout right there. And again, you know, I kind of let that come all the way through like that. You know, not, you know, you don't want to give up on it. As long as you're, you're moving through the trout stream, you're trying to be, move as slow as you can, be as quiet as you can. And that's what happens right there. That's a perfect fish right there. Probably, you know, 10, 11 inch or huh? Yeah, we're catching plenty of those. And what, you know, what we've been doing is kind of just waiting for the, the fish that, you know, if it's hooked really good, just let it go. But something like that, it's got it a little bit deep, it's probably not gonna make it no. anyhow, right? Yep, yeah, a little yeah, bit of blood. Those are the ones, and you get enough of those, you end up with three, four of those, that's plenty. Not losing them. No. <laughs> if it falls out, it just floats right down the stream. Oh, another one right there. Holy, there must be a little pocket right there. You know, this is all cut underneath here. And them fish definitely, this is where they lay right here. And that was right where I caught my last one. You know, that's only, you know, four feet from us. Yeah, and if you're quiet enough walking up and you're not kicking up too much stuff. And that's why typically you go upstream too, right? Versus yep. walking downstream. And that one was really easily hooked, so that's an easy one to let go. Let right go. Because we're going to get a ton of them like this today. Yeah, them are nice fish. Yep. A lot of precision casting. Spinner's fun. Oh, you right away. You said you were going to get bit. Dang it, man. But it's about that size, right? This yeah, still, them are, shallow, right? Hey. That'll be a good one. Yeah. Them are great trout. I can't believe the size of these brook trout. You know, you look at this little bitty river, and you're like, how can it hold so many trout? You know, and they're all natives. You know, again, a lot of it, this one's not look too bad. I'm going to let him go. A lot of it's just being respectful for the resource, you know. The great part about letting things go is that, you know, for the most part, you know, when you come back, 
you're gonna have a really good chance of catching that fish again. Most trout streams, you know, if you catch a brook trout that size right there, that's no doubt, that's, that's a great eating fish. But this stream has definitely got a lot of big trout in it. Oh man, oh that is a nice one. Oh, look at the size of this one. No doubt that the bigger fish do come on spinners. Matt's got the spinner and I got the crawler, so a lot of times, you know, not always, but I think Matt's been taking the first couple casts and they're definitely getting the bigger fish, but wow, that's a nice fish. You know, that's a good solid 10, 10 inch trout right there. Yeah, that's a beauty. See, that he's got those, this one's got those really pretty big markings it on does. it. Almost looks like a tiger. You know, I kind of like the spinner too because they're never hooked real deep either. Yeah. You know, like where the crawler, you really got to watch that line to make sure that, the, you know, while you're waiting for it to float down, that there's not a trout on there. He doesn't have it swallowed down to his hiney. Yeah, that is a beauty right there. And you know what? Just like you were saying, Larry, if you let a fish like the one you just caught go, yep. next year you come back, it's going to be like this. It's about finding them. It is. The brookies aren't terribly tough to get, but finding that habitat, finding the right place to actually you know, go after some bigger quality fish like this. And then the key is like what we've been saying is, you know, being being a conservationist about it. When right? you do find when that. When you do find old. it, yeah. Because right. everybody should get a chance if they're lucky enough to find a little piece of paradise like this. It definitely, it's good exercise for sure. You know, we took the bikes in today and to get back into some of these far spots. But the, the, the other thing is just, just getting in the, the stream here and how therapeutic that it is. Yeah, you kind of get lost out in the wilderness, you know, and Thomas was saying, I thought it was relaxing at the cabin last night. Right. And it's like, you get out here and it's like, it's a whole lot more relaxing. Yeah, yet. just the sound of the, the water moving. And again, you know, I've always said this, there's, there's no doubt that people that enjoy the outdoors really kind of look at life differently. No offense to anybody, um, but you really do look at life differently. And it's definitely more in a natural state. And I've always said this, you know, like you want people, all people to be able to experience these kind of things and to live in a big city, you know, I mean, a lot of people do it and they love doing it, but you really sometimes get lost in real, the real purpose of why we're here and what we're supposed to be doing on this planet. So, you know, if you live in a big city, you know, that's awesome, but really try to spend at least a little bit of time out in the, the natural things, not always the concrete world. Hey, like I always say, Hang on to your heinies. Oh, 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 that was so cool. <laughs> you kind of jumped out of the water. Oh, that was so cool. Got wrapped on it. <laughs> wrapped on the branch. Again, barely hooked. And that's a good, you know, that's a good 10 incher right there if I was going to look for another fish. But he's hooked. He's not hooked bad, so I want to keep fishing, so I'm going I'm to definitely let him go. If we get a little bit of, you know, riffle going riffle. right here, mm -hmm. it'll it'll make all that, you know, it'll make them feel safe. Make it better for them. They like that cover. Oh, you got a good one. Oh, I got one too. I got one too. I got a good one. Oh, that's a good one. I got a really good one. Oh, man, we got a double. Look at the size of this one I got. Oh, that's a beauty. It's a male too. It's so pretty. <laughs> a double trouble here. And it doesn't look like when you look at that spot up there, everybody, There's a, you can see how it went dark. And you wouldn't think that there'd be that many stacked up there, but no doubt. Man, them are some, look at the size of these trolls. That's a good one there, and that's just, it's amazing how, how thick they get. Yeah, just they one are. more year, you know? Yep.
Hey Matt, let's show really the proper way to uh, gut a trout out. And typically I like to gut them out, you know, obviously, you know, we've got a lot more stream to fish here, yep. but uh, just to keep them fresh, you yeah, know, I mean, right, it's, yeah. you know, 85 degrees out today and uh, this water here in the trout stream is in its 50s. So yep. it's a great place to, to gut them out, but let's, there is a yep. technique to it. And let's yeah. show, show everybody how to do it. Right, so starting at the shoot here, just heading straight up. And then when you get up to the top, pop right through. Oh, just like that, yep. huh? And then you grab onto this whole mess. Right. Hold them up here. And then you just take the whole thing and pull it. Holy and man, let's show sure. it. That was absolutely simple. So all yep. the guts and everything, basically right there, there, and we'll throw the yep. guts up on shore. Yep. And then zip it down the middle. So you're kind of just breaking open that blood sack in yep. there, huh? And then. Just kind of run your finger up and down. And, and you can really tell that these trout are natives because oh, look yeah. how that's like how, salmon, right? How orange that meat is. Yep. Because a lot of trout streams, you know, in the Midwest, they plant a lot of trout, you know, right. which is yep. cool. And they do a great job. There's great, there's, uh, you know, organizations like Trout Unlimited, and of course the DNR does a lot of great things too. Not a lot of the streams have that exact composition of the bottom material that the fish need for spawning. For good spawning. You know, if, if the, the gravels aren't there, the success rate's gonna be really low and then you end up with real, and that and water temperatures too, you know. Obviously we're, we're a ways north and we're a ways back also where there's not a lot of people that come back here and fish. I mean, would you, if you were just the average guy, you're probably not gonna hop on a mountain bike and go a mile right. and a half right. back into the woods. There's a lot of walking. Take another half a mile no. walk back to the creek, so. You know, that is a cool thing too about having the bikes is that, you know, and uh, the bikes we are running are the Baku and the Ram, Rambos. Um, but uh, the cool part is that uh, they're electric too. So, you know, when you do get tired, it is kind of nice just to hit that throttle and go. You know, in a lot of these areas like this, you, you know, when you're on public land, there is a lot of public land uh, that you can legally drive these bikes on like we are today. So you just kind of yeah. got to check out the areas. And you know, I'm not getting any younger obviously, but I like to pedal as much as I can. But when I do get tired, it's great to be able to hit that assist and have that electric and go. Hey Matt, looks like it's almost ready to eat, you know, and I'm stirring this up. Let's tell everybody at home really what's in here. I mean, this looks amazing. Yeah, well you, you start with, you know, like, like a half a stick or a stick of butter, some olive oil, make a roux, and then you add red peppers, yellow peppers, green peppers, jalapeno peppers, mix Woo. it all up with some bay leaves, and then you add some chicken stock, and uh, and then you just add in a little, I added a little bit of crab, a little bit of shrimp, but I mean the star of this was gonna be the brook trout. The brook trout. Extra spicy food. Oh, you. I love spicy it's foods. It's something different, because yeah. a lot of times you just see people cooking up the fish, but right. it doesn't need to be like that, you know, it didn't take long for me to throw this together, and this is gonna, well, that's it's definitely awesome. gonna fill us up for the next part of the journey up here. Well, I'll tell you what, let's grab a bowl. Uh, and uh, I love that we have all the stuff packed in your backpack here uh, too. So let's- Makes uh, it easier. If you could only smell <laughs> how good it smells, it would be like, you'd be coming right through that television and being like, I want a bowl of that. Mm -hmm. Oh, that is absolutely that is good. incredible. Oh. Hey, Shotgun Schaefer, eat your heart out. <laughs> Built for fishermen, built by fishermen. Um, really, that says it all. It's the family here. It's it's not a big, big conglomerate. It's a family. They treat you. You feel like you're in a family, you know. When you put those two together, an amazing product and amazing people, it's just the type of company you want to be involved with. Not only because of just the great boats, but because of the camaraderie that the Warrior family has. The customer service is amazing. Uh, they never leave you hanging. So come join the Warrior family. To the giant throat we go. Oh man, isn't that right? Oh, life is so good. Pays to hang around with good people.
Hey everybody, this week's tip of the week brought to you by our good friends up at Mike's Country Meats in Tigerton, the finest jerky on the planet. I've got a great tip for you that I got actually from Matt, making your crawler weedless. When you go to hit hook your crawler, typically I would just hook it once like that, okay? And you have all that hook exposed and I kept getting snagged in the brush. So what Matt does, he just kind of puts a little twist on that crawler and just very lightly puts that in there. Now you look at, there's no point of the hook sticking out and it's amazing how much more brush you can pull that through and, and again, the less snags you're getting because there's nothing exposed that's gonna catch on to the brush and the branches and everything else that's laying on the bottom. So a real simple tip right there, but definitely very effective. This week's tip of the week, of course, brought to you by our good friends up at Mike's Country Meats, the finest jerky on the planet. You get spoiled fish in this trick. Yeah, it's ridiculous sometimes. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you what, everybody, what an amazing week we had this week. Definitely want to thank Matt for his great hospitality, the great food, and taking us fishing. What an awesome, awesome week. Hey, make sure you guys check out all of our social media avenues, especially our podcast that comes out every Tuesday. We eat fish eat. Don't forget that we are still living in the greatest country in the world as of today. Want to give special thanks to all of our military men and women for the great service and all of our law enforcement agents. And I'll tell you what, there's no doubt, and I mean no doubt, that it is a great day to be alive, and we'll see you next week. We're gonna keep fishing a little bit more. What the hell just happened? Are you serious? Weren't you just giving the interns lessons on what to do and what not to do? <laughs> Tall pine, skinny pine, fat pine. Confucius say, never teach student what you don't know. Got it. R really? Is it ruined? Yeah, it, yeah, all right, yeah. Trout fishing and gross fishing. <laughs> and don't forget that every week, what am I saying? I forgot, I'm gonna keep casting. <laughs>